Hello and welcome to Money Life. This is Sucheta Dilal. Today I'm going to talk about an issue that I think affects all of us, right? Which is when banks begin to harass you for not having complied with Know Your Customer Requirements or KYC as it is called, which needs to be updated every two years. So every few months or years you have banks chasing you to come and resubmit all your documents. Now, while it is irritating, it's something that we routinely do. We've got used to it. Last year was different because last year you couldn't step out of your house because of the COVID pandemic and the lockdown. But that didn't stop banks from harassing us. So we got a little deeper into it. Now, we know that people are being harassed for a variety of reasons, but take a look at what has been happening. And let's before that look at the larger picture. So you have a bank account which you've been using regularly. You probably get your salary there. You make a whole lot of payments. You're using it for your business. You pay salaries. It's a running account. There is absolutely no suspicious activity, no criminal activity, no money laundering. The bank knows it. You know it. It's as routine as you get. Yet on the grounds of KYC or beneficial ownership or anything that the RBI comes up with from time to time, the bank begins to harass you. They don't always understand the rules or the implications. What we find is that this power, which is so draconian, because when you place your hard earned tax paid taxable money in trust with the bank, it is money that is only in their safekeeping. They have no right whatsoever to freeze it unless you're doing something criminal. Yes, if you're doing money laundry, you're doing something suspicious, the government has all the rights to question it. But with due process, there has to be some research, some uh, evidence that there is some wrongdoing. There has to be a court order. Otherwise, it amounts to inflicting financial death. You don't think about it like this, but think about it. You have one bank account, all transactions happening to it, through it, you're a law abiding citizen, one fine day it's frozen because your biometrics couldn't be read or some other frivolous reason and your money is blocked. This is the same government that is also telling us, please do not do cash transactions. We're going to make it difficult for you to deal with cash, do things online or do things through your bank account. Then that bank account has to be safe and they cannot give you a sentence of financial death unless there is good enough reason. It cannot be on technicalities. Now, for more than a decade, we have we Indians have been putting up with it because believe it or not, the Ministry of Finance under money laundering rules has framed these KYC requirements in 2002. They notified the rules in 2005 under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act, told RBI issue a fatwa, impose it. RBI in turn issued a fatwa to banks and it fines them if this is not implemented absolutely in a draconian manner. When you do something draconian, you need to have feedback on whether what you've done is right. Is the damage that you're inflicting on people proportionate to what was expected from it? Is it being implemented correctly? Is it meant to be implemented on law abiding citizens? But governments don't care, so they don't bother. And we as disparate individuals with no right to fight on our own individually, can't do much. So we put up with this nonsense and we have been putting up with it for more than a decade. Now, I'm looking at this with three cases. So in one case, I'm going to narrate them to you. So in one case, a retired central bank, uh, central government officer, an excise officer in his 80s lives alone in Bangalore. His account was frozen. I can't imagine that he would have more than two or three accounts. He would have one account in which he gets his pension, which he spends for his daily needs. It was frozen because his biometrics couldn't be read. Luckily, his son had a lot of crowd with a large, powerful private bank which froze his account and he managed to fix it for his father. Second case, in the middle of a pandemic, a UK healthcare worker, non-resident Indian couple received a notification from their bank with just four weeks to comply with KYC requirements. No problem. They had an NRO account. Again, no problem. They uploaded documents because that's what they could do sitting at home in the UK, which was also under lockdown and India under lockdown. 
So they uploaded the KYC documents. Remember, all of us are law abiding citizens. We are doing our best to comply. Most of us do it, which is why we have very little sympathy when we hear that somebody had issues with KYC because we say, yes, it's irritating, but go and do it. So this man did it. Bank says, no, I want a self attested document. Now self attested means that you need to have a printer at home, which most people don't have. You have to print it out, sign it, scan it again, upload it. Senior citizens who are not very net savvy are not going to be able to do it. And they're not even supposed to be able to do it in a lockdown. So while governments announce moratoriums, there is no sympathy for what individuals have been going through. There's untold harassment and it's all over social media. Any number of people have posted it. Now, this NRI decided that I'm going to follow it up. He wrote to the RBI's customer services department and asked them, he said, please tell me what the rules are. Tell me what are the directions and what have I done wrong? And is it as strict as this? RBI just writes to him saying, please look at our master directions, which have been posted on our website. Give him a link. These directions, mind you, I'm going to show you a chart are renewed over and over again. So again, we ordinary people are not supposed to understand all of RBI's master directions. Remember, it's not a single thing about KYC that's easy to read that you can understand. You're supposed to read their master directions, understand all the updations and changes and figure out what applies to you. This man just gave up and RBI very helpfully tells him how he can complain to the banking ombudsman, which means zero sympathy. I couldn't care less and please suffer. The third is our own case, money life. September last year, just as salaries were due at the end of September, after a long conversation back and forth, Access Bank decided to freeze our account. Why? Because they said one of the investors had not signed a beneficial ownership document to the satisfaction of Access Bank. Now, mind you, we had been going back and forth because we wanted to do right. We are into financial literacy and education. We believe in compliance. We didn't think that there's anything wrong, but what they were asking seemed bizarre because a person who was not a director and not a beneficial owner or in any way a signatory to documents was being asked to declare himself a beneficial owner and provide documents. The worst thing is that we have an account in another leading private bank, which had a different form and different rules. So we kept going back and forth and say, show us the rules. The officer at the lowest level at Access Bank would not even entertain. He wouldn't touch the documents that we were submitting. We went to the branch manager, no use. We wrote to the PR department. Remember, we as a media company tend to have a reach all the way to the top. So we wrote to the MD and CEO, the head of customer services, public relations people who are otherwise normally in touch with us, no answer. We then messaged them, no answers, not even the managing director and the CEO. Finally, in desperation, after our accounts were frozen, I reached out to someone really high up in the Reserve Bank of India. I was hurt. I pointed out that we wanted to follow the rules. We are willing to follow the rules. But what the our Access Bank is asking us was an illegal declaration because somebody who was not a signatory was being made to sign because they say we are demanding it. This is our form. I also pointed out that another bank has not asked us to do this. Luckily, luckily, I was hurt. I had the reach. And after the RBI decided to help us, things began to move. So even at 10 in the night, we got a call from Access Bank. And within two days, the form was changed. Everything was resolved. And we did not have to submit what they had been demanding that we submit. We were absolutely outraged. We, as you know, run Money Life Foundation. We try to help others. And here we were, wanting to do the right thing, reaching out to the top. We do not get the decency and the courtesy of a hearing. So what did we do? But I'm going to come to that a little later. Or OK, maybe I'll tell you what we did. We decided to vote with our feet. We closed all our six accounts in Access Bank. And this is what we advise everybody. If your bank is so deaf, that it will not listen to reason, it will not listen to your complaints. There's only one thing to do, which is to change banks. 
Yes, it is a difficult process. Among other things, we had a change.org petition. We've been lobbying to say we should have transfer of accounts exactly like you can do with your mobile phone. And this is possible today because the RBI has mandated unique customer IDs across banks for the last since 2013. In fact, from 2014, RBI has been very strict about it. it can be done. But the banking lobby is so strong, it does not want us to have the choice. But this is for another day. So what we did also is something that I told you. We voted with our feet. We got rid of our access bank accounts. Then we said, let's get to the bottom of it. How many accounts are frozen? What exactly are the rules? What are the circumstances in which banks are allowed to do this? So my colleague Yogesh Sapkali filed a right to information application with the Reserve Bank of India and we asked something simple. We said, give us the specific regulations and guidelines regarding freezing of customer accounts. And we also wanted to know at what level has this part been delegated? Answer again, like the NRI, we have not issued any specific directions in this regard. You haven't, and yet we are being harassed to this extent. But they say it's the same thing. Go to the master directions, which we issued in 2016. We updated it five times. Figure it out. Be a banking genius and understand. Here's a picture. It shows that these regulations, the latest is February. The earliest is February 25th, 2016. Updated December 2020, April 2020, twice. Jan 9, 2020, August 9, 2019, May 29, 2019. You are supposed to figure it out. It's under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. We then said, how many accounts have been frozen? How many people have suffered? Are they in lakhs? Crores? Remember, bank accounts are in crores. RBI said we do not have the data, which means a draconian guideline which inflicts financial death on you, can shut down your account and the consequences, remember, are huge. For instance, if your account is frozen, you may have credit card payments, you may have standing instructions, you may have fixed deposits linked to it, utility bills, all of it goes for a toss. If you are a company like ours, at the end of September when salaries had to be paid, we would have been stuck and not been able to pay salaries to all our staff and they in turn may have had loans, EMIs, bills to pay. Can you imagine the level of damage? It's not about us alone. And RBI doesn't even know. It doesn't even collate this information. Everything that is so draconian ought to have a court order, ought to have suspicion of criminal activity. How can a running account used every week where you know the person, our account was open for nine years, 2009 actually, much longer than nine years. They know us extremely well. They know there is no wrongdoing, no suspicious activity. Exactly the same with the NRI, even worse with the senior citizen who's in his 80s, who had an account for 30 or 40 years with the same bank. But one fine day, your money is blocked. Can this go on? This is serious. If it happened to us, it can happen to you. If you feel as strongly about it, please write to us. If it has happened to you, write to us at foundation at moneylife.in with details. We intend to take it up. We would like to take it as a class action. We would like to write a memorandum to the RBI and to the finance ministry. We hope they will see reason. As usual, many of us wake up. We did when it happened to us because we didn't realize that their understanding of the rules can be wrong and we will be penalized on it. Not even an apology, no consequences, no compensation, no penalty. You suffer. We just decided we will not suffer again with the same bank. Will we be luckier with the next? We don't know. But at least a known devil is something that you need to get away from. So if you agree with it, write to us. If you like what I said, if you think it affects others, please share this video and please subscribe to us. Thank you.